In this video, we're going to look at one more example of using the indefinite integral to evaluate for a general antiderivative of a given function. So, like we said, when we integrate something, that's what the sign means, we're going to integrate, this is the integral symbol, what we're going to do is we're going to anti-differentiate the function that's inside of this operator. So we're going to, we're going to take the antiderivative of 3 over x. So again, how we can think about this for the time being is we're going to ask ourselves, we can think about this as the derivative of a function, and we're trying to figure out what function gave us this as a derivative, okay? But we also know that with integrals come some properties that we can use that can maybe come in handy with this question. So whenever we see like a 3 over x like this, since we're different, or <laughs> we're anti-differentiating with respect to x rather, what we're going to see is that this 3 is a constant multiple of the function 1 over x. So we can rewrite this as 3 times the integral of 1 over x dx, and this will give us the same result as if we were to leave 3 inside of this integral. Okay? But now we see this, and the reason why I pulled out that 3 is because now we see this thing. When we were talking about derivatives, there was a function in particular that gave us this as a derivative. Do you guys remember what it is? This is natural log of x, right? So is ln of x. So if we were to take the derivative of the natural log of x, it would return us as a derivative this rational function that we see here in front of us. So because the derivative of this gives us this, the antiderivative of this gives us this, okay? So what we get for this question is that we get three times the antiderivative of one over x, which we said was natural log of x, all right? And then we get plus c at the end of it, that arbitrary constant that we have there. And so then what this question really evaluates to give us is three times the natural log of x plus c. So you may be wondering why I didn't incorporate the plus c into that multiplication, and I really kind of should. And the reason for that is, and it kind of goes back to the first video we did for this uh, section as well. When I broke apart those integrals, I probably should have put the plus c inside of the integral. But the reason why I didn't was because that when we multiply this that we found to be the antiderivative of this thing or the general antiderivative, if we were to dis distribute 3 to natural log of x and to plus c, we get 3 natural log of x. That doesn't change. But if we multiply a constant by 3, we're still going to get another constant, right? So the reason why you can generally kind of exclude that plus c once you have it there is because that any operation you do to it, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, like if you add other plus c's, subtract them, when it's just this arbitrary c that we see, what you're going to have is just anything that you do to it is still going to make it still a plus c. It's not really going to change the fact that it's still going to be plus an arbitrary constant because three times an arbitrary constant is still going to give you an arbitrary constant, right? So this is still going to be our general antiderivative for this function here. And so we just kind of did a quick little explanation about the nature of plus c and kind of what it is in relation to these integration problems. So this problem was a lot shorter than a lot of the other ones in this section, namely because once we took this constant multiple of 3 out of this integral, what we noticed that we can anti-differentiate 1 over x as natural log of x, because we know that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So we use that property, and then we talked again a little bit about how this plus c kind of doesn't really get affected by the nature of this constant multiple. 